Okay, boys and girls, welcome to an episode of DK Goes to the Pawn Shop. Actually, there's probably a lot of episodes of DK Goes to the Pawn Shop, but anyway, I came back from the pawn shop with this thing. It's a PV, obviously. Uh, it's a keyboard amp, KB60. And I know absolutely nothing about it, and I have no idea if it works. All I know it was it's on the stack of things that were priced to make them get out the door immediately. So that's great. I'm all about that. Um, okay, so there's a ground switch thing here, I guess, that you can flip back and forth. A power switch. Um, level. Oh, there's two inputs, so there's like high gain, low gain. So you have two inputs here. Uh, out and in for patch, uh, three band EQ, and a volume knob. Okay, so I have no idea if this works or if it's going to explode or what the condition was, but it was super cheap, so I bought it. Um, that looks to be like a 12-inch speaker in there and a tweeter. It looks like a piezo tweeter of some sort, and we'll have this apart in a little bit. They had this ground defeater thing. We're not going to use that, obviously, because we don't want to get shocked. So let's plug this in and see if it explodes or if it works, or if anything bad happens to us all. Alright, so we plugged it in and it didn't explode yet, but we haven't turned it on. So let's turn it on. And it goes bang. And that sounded like, the, it, sounded like it had a reverb in it. There is a reverb in there. There is, there's a spring reverb. This thing down here is a spring reverb. And it's hissing and crackling at me making sizzly noises. That's a scary noise. Sounds like dirty pots. That's a, that's a very dirty pot. That one too. Okay. Oh, and this is on like push for boost mode. Okay, so I think this is actually just a lot of lot I think there's a lot of grit and nasty stuff in the pots. Let's see if it works. Let's go put a signal into it. Let's see. I have a guitar over here. Let's put a guitar into it. That's good. Hopefully it won't shock the crap out of us, but we will be nice to it and put our PV guitar into our PV keyboard amp. And we'll put it into high gain. Oh yeah, that made noise. Let's try the other input over here. That made noise too. And that makes noise. And that makes noise. And the boost switch makes a lot more noise. And the reverb works. So, okay, so it works. Uh, great, uh, that's cool. I had no idea if it did or not. Now we both know it works. But there's a lot of rattle and rumble, and it seems to follow particularly this bass pot down here. This sounds dreadful. If we do this, it might actually just shut up. Just, get, just doing that made it a lot better. That one's going crispy noises, too. And that makes some crispy noises. And all of these are kind of sticky and ducky feeling. So, yeah, I guess it works. I'm in a good mood, because I got a really good price on this. And I don't want you to come to my pawn shops and steal all my stuff, so we're not going to talk about that. So, it's dirty. Um, I'm going to take it apart and give it a bath. We'll pull the chassis out, pull the speakers out, give the cabinet a bath, make this thing look as new as possible, clean the pots. When we're in there, we'll take a look and see if the caps are bad, and... Then we'll have a keyboard amp, which keyboard amps usually make pretty cool bass amps. I mean, I would think this would work fine. It's a 12-inch speaker. It's 60 watts. I've got a 40-watt 12-inch speaker PV bass amp that I carry around that I like just fine. So uh, it's an amplifier, and it was really affordable. So yay! Time to take okay, it apart. Okay, so I took the speaker cover off, and I'm greeted with spider webs. Spider nest and cobwebs and dirt and stuff and this whole thing smells like cigarettes 
Yay! Well, we'll clean that up. Okay, let's get the head okay, out. Okay, so here's the chassis. That looks pretty. Um, we do have little electrolytic caps here that look, well, let's see. They look okay. I don't see anything leaky or blown. We've got a couple op amps there. This was burned in. I don't know when. Got some. It looks like it's just overspray from the paint. I don't see anything tarry or anything. That's just a shadow. It's like overspray from the paint. And we got some caps here that, again, those don't look too bad. Everything looks cool. These are Illinois. These are. Can't tell. Got some green ones over there. I don't know what those are. These say TI. I don't. I don't know. We can look that up if we really care. The reverb plugs down here, and the speaker goes here, and uh, then the speaker has goes to the output jack here. I guess if you're using an external speaker, oh, it's a headphone jack. That's the headphone jack. Okay, never mind. That's the headphone jack. So okay, cool. So we need to give this a bath because it's really kind of grubby. It's really gross and it's nicotine sticky. But uh, we'll do that. We're going to take the speaker out so we can clean that, and I want to see what kind of reverb tank this thing okay, has. Okay, so it. since I intend to take the entire speaker out, we're just going to take a quick shot there of the way the wires are. The blue and yellow come in from the amp head, and then the red and black go over to the tweeter, which, being a piezo tweeter, I don't think it has a crossover okay, number. Okay, so the speaker in there said PV. This... Uh, Piezo Tweeter says it was made in Mexico. Uh, PV. I will build a wall and it's going to be huge. Mexico. Good grief. Well, at least most of it's made in the States. And this speaker says model number 54, 8 ohm impedance, and has a PV thing on it. I don't see USA on this speaker. It says the amp itself was handcrafted in. USA, so I'm guessing that's where it was assembled, although I'll bet some of those capacitors might have come from Asia. You think? I don't know, probably. Well, who cares? Alright, let's go for the reverb. It's actually mounted on the side, so if I look down there on the bottom, it's not there. I have to turn a corner. And I, it's upside down in six, so we'll pull it out of there and see what it is. Okay, so it didn't really want to come out. I think this yellow stuff that was on the RCA connectors, it might just be a byproduct of manufacturing, but uh, might have been something to help keep it from falling off being in a rattly speaker cabinet. Input, output, two springs, suspended chassis. This doesn't look like an Accutronics. Usually Accutronics writes Accutronics on everything, like 50 places. And then we have a number, 1292294. That's upside down, but I can read upside down. It's a good part of being dyslexic. Uh, nothing really stamped here other than a circle, so I don't know whose reverb can this is, but it's a reverb can and it was mounted to the side of the unit with two screws. Two, we could have used four. It just kind of hangs there. I hate the way that they mounted these. Anyway, I'm going to pull the wires out and I'm going to give the cabinet a bath and I'm going to give the chassis a bath and giving these things a bath is not too interesting. Okay, so it's tomorrow, I guess you'd say. It's tomorrow, and uh, I cleaned up the cabinet last night and let it air dry, and it turned out really good. Now we basically just need to do this electronicals mess here. Um, you know, spider webs and dirt. This face is, you know, it's it's like nicotine crap. But just a matter of using like a decent cleaner. I use the LA is totally awesome. It's cheap and it works. Um, it takes all this stuff off and just takes years of crud off of them. So. I'm going to pull the knobs off, scrub the face with a toothbrush and cleaner, wipe it off, and see where it gets us. It probably will make it look way, way better and try to maybe get these stickers off of here. So, yeah, it's really tough, high-tech stuff. This is not a very technical repair. This is like rookie level ones kind of stuff. All right, cleaned clean. Okay, so not, not too much was missed here. I didn't bother to film it because it was boring. Um, but I cleaned the dirt off of the chassis, which there was a lot of it, 
and then all the potentiometers got sprayed with Max Pro Electronic Lubricant, which is like a cleaner lubricant. Some people would do use deoxit. That's fine too. Nothing wrong with deoxit. It's just I'm carrying Max Pro, so that's what I use. Um, so all the pots have been cleaned and turned back and forth a whole bunch of times. All the dirt's been scrubbed off the chassis. The only other real repair we need to do is where the speaker mounts on to, or the speaker grill goes on to the cabinet. All right, here's some sick bouncy camera for you. Um, there are essentially four in the corners here. There's like a Velcro type of pad, and one of the Velcro pads was, uh, they bonded so well that it took tore off the amp. They were stapled down initially. Um, I'm just going to put that back down with a little bit of hot melt glue. The gun's warming up. And other than that, this amp is ready for assembly and testing. Okay, so all fixed up here sits our PDKB60. I think it's actually 50 watts, not 60. On the back it says 50 watts, 8 ohms, which is 8 ohms speaker. So I guess this is 50 watts. But um, it's plenty loud. It's really clean. Um, cleaning the pots took care of the rattle and fizzle. I mean, if I turn the pots and stuff, they all work. That works. That's fine. Um, seems to have enough gain and power and all of that. It's a very clean amp. I suppose it would work fine probably to play a bass through for practice or maybe play an acoustic guitar through it is one of the ideas I had. But uh, it, the price was so good I couldn't turn it down. And the reverb works. There it is. go. It works fine. Um, it's plenty loud. I've got it turned up to, what, uh, not even a, th maybe a third. That's a third on the normal gain on one of the two channels there without the booster switch plugged in. So this has probably got, you know, three times the volume in there. Um, it sounds really nice. It's, you know, a nice clean sound. I, I could use this for probably an acoustic guitar or maybe a bass, uh, but... Considering the price at a complete blowout clearance sale um, at the pawn shop, uh, it needed a bath because it was very uh, smoked around. But uh, taking the electronics out of the cabinet, taking the cabinet up to the big sink, scrubbing it, using you know all-purpose cleaner, scrubbing it up real good and uh, rinsing it down. And then uh, cleaning the spiders out of the electronics, cleaning the pots and putting it back together. So with a bath and a little bit of glue on that one speaker uh, grill holder thing, um, you know, we, we spent probably less than three dollars fixing this if I, you know, consider my cleaner and my rags and all of that. So for getting an amp for absolute chump change, this is a beautiful find. Uh, despite the fact that I won't be using it with a keyboard if I'm going to be using it and heck it's a good working amplifier now so if I do not find a good use for it here somebody who does play keyboard or acoustic guitar or something would be glad to have it um, it works and sounds really really good So. with a really pretty reverb. That's actually a really nice sounding reverb. I've had those sort of rounded can reverbs before and they weren't that great. But this video will go on forever with me just standing here talking, so thanks for watching. Got this at the pawn shop. It works good now. Hooray. Video over. Take care.